Welcome into the Nets and Digital Studios. Courtney Cox joined now by our Patriots beat writer, Doug Kai. Doug, fresh off of the trip at the Combine out in Indy. Uh, for you, you were very active on the Twitter machine. Yes. Uh, so for Patriots fans, we all want to thank you for giving us everything <laughs> we need to know. But as a Pats beat reporter, who really stood out to you for this Pats roster? Yeah, I'll throw out three names, first of which is Kyle Oletta, the quarterback from Richmond. He's the guy who's kind of been described as Bill Belichick's perfect quarterback. Mm. I did a long feature on him. He met with some scouts out there. So go to Nesson.com to read that feature. Uh, but Good he's plug. certainly a guy that could be that next Jimmy Garoppolo, I think. Uh, real quickly, running back slash tight end slash slot receiver out of NC State, Jalen Samuels. He ran that all-important pre-cone in a good time, which Patriots fan or the Patriots like. And he's he was a slot receiver slash short yardage back mm. at NC State. Very rare to have those types of skill sets. And one final one is safety Justin Reed out of Stanford. He might be the smartest prospect I've ever talked to. He held a formal interview with Bill Belichick and Steve Belichick. I'm sure that that conversation was great because he seems like he could probably already be an NFL coach. He's that smart. Oh, I like that a lot. Um, okay, so let's talk about a new representative uh, that was there <laughs> representing the Pats. Uh, you can break this one down. I really don't need to intro it. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, I think that everyone kind of saw uh, while we were out there that Brett Bielema was there, former head coach of Arkansas and Wisconsin, and he was actually there as a representative of the Patriots. So that's very interesting. That could mean one of two things. It could mean the fact that Bill Belichick's just kind of doing one of his buddies a favor, or it could mean that he's a potential to join the Patriots defensive staff. I would lean towards the former, that he's just there as a keen scouting eye, that getting his name out there by bringing him to the combine. But Patriots do have some things up in the air at defense. Uh, Matt Patricia did leave uh, to be the head coach of the Lions. They're probably going to promote Brian Flores. That would be a deserved hire, but maybe he could use some help from a guy like Brett Bielma, who has a lot of experience on defense. All right, well, you've been around all the coaching staff. You've been around all the other reporters. Rex Burkhead and Marquise Flowers, what do you see out of that for this upcoming year? Yeah, it seems like both of those guys, just from some sources that I talked to, could have a little bit more interest than some people might have expected on the open market. Uh, Rex Burkhead, not a sure thing to return to the Patriots, so we'll see how that one goes. Deion Lewis already is not expected to return to the Patriots, so uh, running back could be a big need heading into the offseason. Marquise Flowers could get a higher offer than some people expect. I think when the Patriots traded for him, they were expecting him to be one of those veteran minimum guys, but there are definitely some teams that are interested in him out there, maybe not as a starter, but as kind of that depth linebacker. He's an athletic type. All right, well, everybody was very shocked when Josh McDaniels did not make the trip out there. For you, why did that happen? Why was he not in Indy? <laughs> the theory out there is that... Theories. Pats fans love theories. They do love theories. Maybe Josh McDaniels didn't want to be in Indianapolis after he, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of screwed over the Colts. Uh, also, probably not thought too highly of in some NFL circles after doing that as well. So I think that's kind of the working theory. The Patriots said that he didn't go because he had some special projects to do. One other thing is the Patriots did go on a long Super Bowl run. They were in the Super Bowl. They were in the playoffs for a long time. Josh McDaniels hasn't had time to watch Andy's quarterback, so maybe he's just waiting to meet with those guys until he has had a chance to watch their film a little bit more. Going into it, I'm sure you thought maybe the quarterback interest would be really high for the Pats. Coming out of it, did you feel like that was true? No, I, I don't know if they held a single formal interview with a quarterback. Kyle Loretta, like I said, met with some scouts, but a lot of the quarterbacks were like, oh yeah, I've met with all the teams, and he'd say, how about the Patriots? They're like, you know what, they're the one team I didn't meet Interesting. with. Interesting. And I think it is because McDaniels wasn't out there. I don't think Jerry Shaplinski the assistant quarterbacks coaches out there. I didn't see Chad O'Shea out there. didn't see Dante Scarnacchia. So I think the Patriots really are waiting to meet with those guys until the pro days, until the private visits, until the workouts, because there's really not that many quarterbacks they'll be interested in. So you can dedicate a little bit more time than at the Combine when you're really only meeting these guys for 15 minutes at a time. Well, great stuff from Doug, as always. Uh, you and Zach Cox just did a podcast, mm -hmm. so you can check that out on Nesson.com. And on iTunes. And on iTunes. Yep, the Nesson uh, Patriots podcast. There you go. Good plug there. <laughs> uh, but if you're not already doing so, follow along with Doug at Doug Kide on Twitter. Keep it locked in, Nesson.com. We've got all your coverage during this offseason for the NFL and into the regular season.